movie made about it. And then, of course, from all the history. You ever heard of snake college. handlers? Yes. It's, that's area. That's the area. Oh. <laughs> so, I mean, you're, you're, you're really in a... It wasn't one of those churches, and I... I don't know. I think I'd like to go to one just to see what's good. I'd be scared to death. I would never walk into a place that handles snakes. Well, we know that. Oh, I hate. <laughs> yes, we know that they slither that up the when case, you drive over them. They <laughs> slither up your slither up your tire and into your vehicle and get you. Never seen Lethal Weapon Four. No. Me, you've never seen Lethal Weapon. No. Good lord, you've seen it, right? Please. All right, never mind. He's begging. Tell him, yeah. Yes, Nick, I've seen it. <laughs> it. For people out there that are actually normal. No, I, well, I because yeah, this is I one of the greatest be, movies of all time. Anyways, anyway. Joe Pesci gets into these like rants, you know, jo, you know mm -hmm. Joe Pesci. Yes, I know who They Joe get Pesci. you at the drive through the, That's me talking like a snake. They, the snakes will get you in the road. They'll get you, you know, everywhere. Did so, you see snakes on a plane? I would not see snakes on a plane. I'm see, sorry. but I don't see gonna... the movie, and, and I'm an idiot, but no, no, he no, no, won't no. see I never said you were an idiot. Why do you... Lola, I not, wasn't normal. Isn't that what normal. he said? That we I, weren't I was, normal? I will well, stand by us, normal. Us abnormal people. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't, I've seen the movies you see. Your movies are scary. But. In a, in a whole. Uh, he watches. He loves the B movie, horror movie. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, right? I do. He loves. I mean, it's, it's really interesting. Ed Wood. <laughs> Wait, no. Plan love. 9 from Outer Space. I will admit that I, I want to watch Plan Edward. 9 from Outer Space. I have that. You do? Yeah, of We're course I do. That. Should I call Nick Redfern now? Yeah, you can go ahead and call we him should, now. Uh, did uh, Mystery Science Theater ever do like a... No. It's, I love be, Mystery Science <laughs> I, yeah, Theater. I, I, you oh, know they still do is... that kind of stuff. It's, uh, they do riff tracks now. Have you ever heard of riff tracks? No. Oh, you you probably love riff tracks. They take new movies, yeah. and you can put them on somehow. I'm not sure how it works exactly. They just record the audio of them doing it, and you can like play it. And you can put it, it on. If you them. put the movie in, you can buy it from them. It'll sync up, and it'll be them making fun of. They've got movies oh. like they've, <laughs> they've got like the Iron Man movie that just came yeah, out, they, yeah. and all the newer movies they do, and it's popular ones. I've never exactly. All you have to do is, heard... is get my family together yeah. and <laughs> record it. Yeah. you know. Uh, a uh, quick announcement. This Saturday morning at 9 a.m. at Tredelphia Methodist Church, uh, there's a free event going on. It's uh, Breakfast with the Easter Bunny, and uh, it's put on by the uh, Tredelphia Volunteer Fire Department Auxiliary and the Tredelphia, Me Blah, Blah, Tredelphia Methodist Church, and uh, they're doing an egg hunt. They're doing breakfast. They're doing... Uh, so I can meet the pictures. Easter Bunny? Yeah, they're doing pictures with the Easter Bunny. I want to get a picture of the Easter Bunny. If enough people call in and, and encourage him, maybe Nick will go and sit on the Easter Bunny's lap and get the picture. The Easter Bunny will not call in. It'll <laughs> <laughs> be like, no, like, no. But that is uh, Saturday morning, 9 a.m. at Tredelphia Methodist Church. So uh, it's right next to the post office. Now, are you going to be sitting on the Easter Bunny's lap and no. asking for gifts? No. Sorry. I'll be at You'll it. have other things to do. I do. Well, my, you'll be playing. Are you, my, is your my, band playing? My band's playing there down in Charleston this weekend. You, so. Are you going to be able to go? Yeah. Okay. Um, Just, hopefully. Can I whisper too? No. Awkwardly? <laughs> Awkward Awkwardly. whispers. <gasps> oh my goodness. We have our guest on. All right, Nikki, you want to bring him in? Okay, Nick Redford. <laughs> no. I'm, so, I'm sorry. That was... We're sorry, Nick Redfern. Yeah, we, I, we do this and behave this way all the time. We haven't had her. Okay, uh, Nick Redfern is uh, author of uh, Three Men Seeking Monsters, uh, memoirs of, you know, I lost my paper. Uh, author of a bunch of books about cryptozoology, ufology. He's probably going to hang up on me now. Are you there, Nick? Oh, God, he oh. did. <laughs> <laughs> ah! And we've lost our guest. We've lost another one. I, I, Nick, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. I am here. There's also uh, there's something in the woods, which is your newest one, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And that's that's what I'm kind of interested. I, I I just want to hear. These are all. Are they all fictional? Or are they non-fictional? Oh no, they're all they're all non-fiction. Um, basically, what what I do, um, I sort of travel around, investigate, and sightings and reports of weird creatures, everything from Bigfoot, Chupacabras, Lake Monsters. And then what I try and do with the books is, is write them as the expeditions occurred. So they're kind of written like a road trip style. Um, somebody actually once described them as the X-Files meets fear, fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, which, uh, <laughs> which, is, probably, which is probably pretty close to the, uh, the truth. 
But uh, yeah, they're all non-fiction kind of road trip books investigating weird people, uh, weird creatures and coming across interesting and eccentric people in the process, I guess. Because so. if he's investigating weird people, we're next. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Perhaps it wasn't such a good idea, guys, to have him on. <laughs> he may be the center of his next book. You'll there see you a go. picture of me walking through the woods with <laughs> a bag kind of over my shoulder. Yeah, it'll be all over the place. I have a question. Uh, are, are they still doing... I was uh, looking up some information on some of your books. Mm -hmm. I came across... Uh, the book, uh, Three uh, three Men Seeking Monsters, yes. they're making a movie out of it? No, well, basically what happened is that the rights were optioned a few years ago. Uh -huh. um, and that's, that's kind of like a, a thing that happens with a lot of my books, that publishers will approach movie companies or vice versa, and they say, are you interested in optioning the rights? And yes, they were, but, but nothing ever happened with it. I mean, whether anything ever would, I don't know. Um, I know that a lot of media outlets on the net picked up on the story and assumed all sorts of things that you know a film was being made etc but it was literally just a um someone optioning an it. option of rights yeah but i mean something could happen with well, it one well, day the story i ran across was that um john hatter which is a uh, napoleon dynamite uh, yeah. is it was cast and i'm thinking is this the guy that's going to play nick <laughs> well and what does know, this say about nick <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I never really you know i don't really know the answer to those questions because um, they just you know, take you out of it altogether then, right? Well, I mean, they can. You know, they, they can fictionalize a story. Uh, I mean, I know in some of those news stories about that, it said Nick Redfern's novel, which, you know, it isn't a novel, so they got that wrong in the... In the, <laughs> uh, in the I don't know if that's actually mentioned in the ones that you um, read. But, yeah, I mean, th this was all sort of kicked off a couple of years ago. But, I mean, you know, I guess something could happen with it one day, but certainly... Nothing has. So. Well, well, let's talk about that book. So, so three men seeking monsters. I'm guessing one of them were you. Who are yeah. the other two men? Uh, the other two, um, two friends of mine, John Downs and Richard Freeman. And Richard and John, um, John lives in England, in a little village called Walsery. Uh, Richard lives in a city called Exeter, and they kind of basically do the same as me. They run an organisation which um, full time investigates sightings of weird animals, and we've been on a lot of expeditions all around the, world, uh, around the world. Richard's just come back from Russia, where he's been looking for the Russian equivalent of uh, Bigfoot. Uh, me and John went a couple of years ago to Puerto Rico looking for the Chupacabra. So we, we kind of do a lot of traveling around and you know, trying to get to the bottom of whatever lies at the heart of these stories. So. Wow. Now, uh, did you say you went for the Chupacabra. Did you find any evidence of the Chupacabra? Well, you know, it's like a lot of these cases. You tend to be reliant upon witness testimony more than anything else because unless you you got the really good luck to be in the right place at the right time, then for the most part, you know, you, you may be six months after the trail's gone cold or whatever, so... But that doesn't mean, you know, witness testimony isn't worth hearing. I mean, oh, in Puerto Rico, we spoke with police officers, veterinarians, civil defense people, ranchers who had either investigated Chupacabra's reports or had been the victims, their animals had been the victims of attacks. And, you know, when you speak to a qualified police officer saying he and a vet veterinarian were involved in the autopsy of a creature and they found, or an animal, and they found the animal's body completely drained of blood... You know, what do you think? It's it kind of opens your eyes to the fact that these aren't hoaxes or pe fantasies. You know, they're they're trained police officers being sent out to to crime scenes. But in this case, you know, the crime scenes are chupacabra attacks, which kind of sounds a bit bizarre. But that's now, nevertheless can, what you get. Can so. you clarify uh, for our listeners who uh, may not know what is the chupacabra? Well, the chupacabra is this weird animal that's been reported on the island of Puerto Rico. And the reports go back, or the main reports go back about 15 years, but there's, I guess, like fragmentary reports going back decades. Many people describe it as having like a monkey-like body um, with bright eyes, claws and fangs. And in some cases, it, it seems to have like large bat-like wings. And this has actually led some people to think or suggest the possibility that it, could it be some sort of giant bat? Um, back in the prehistoric era, there certainly were giant bats much bigger than today's bats. And this is one of the theories that's kind of persisted. 
which, you know, is a little bit more down to earth in terms of not being a literal monster, whatever that might be. But, you know, if, you, if you're confronted with a bat with an eight-foot wingspan, that, that's pretty monstrous in itself. Now, so is, right. this, is this a large animal, a small animal? Well, most of the reports, the witness reports, talk about a, a monkey, -like, a creature with a monkey-like body round about four and a half feet tall and kind of muscular and agile. Um, but then it's obviously not a monkey because it's got very sharp, like razor-sharp claws rather than fingernails. And... You know, I've yet to see a monkey with a big pair of bat wings on its back. So. No, it's a Wizard of Oz. Is it? Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I've heard it's called like a goat sucker. Or that's what chupacabra means. Yeah, or... chupacabra is Latin for goat sucker. And basically the reason it was given that name was because when the, the large scale attacks began in the mid 1990s, it was mainly um, goats, which uh, a lot of ranchers on the island of Puerto Rico keep. It was mainly goats that were attacked and killed. But why a lot of the reports stood out was because, whereas, you know, a wild animal like a big cat, if it invades a farm or a ranch, it'll attack and kill the animals for food and drag them off. The weird thing about all the chupacabras attacks is that in 99% of the reports, um, there's no evidence that the dead animals, that the creatures try to eat them. It's basically just puncture the neck and drain the body either completely or partially of blood. And that's why it's kind of uh, this, this mythology of like a vampire legend has grown around it. Um, and it's, you know, it's kind of like the, the Puerto Rican equivalent of Bigfoot or, you know, the Scottish Loch Ness Monster, that sort of thing. So. I was going to ask you about that because it was just... I think ABC ran something in Good Morning America. They're uh -huh. looking for the hidden truths or something. Mm. And one of them was on Nessie. Mm. Um, and some of the pictures, honestly, to me, look very real. Mm. Others, of course, really don't. Yeah. But have you investigated into Nessie? Yes, I have, actually. The, the first time uh -huh. I went to Loch Ness, this is what got me interested in the subject. I was only about five or six years old, and my parents took me to Scotland for a week, and we spent a day at the Loch. And when my dad told me this story about the Loch Ness Monster or monsters, um, it, that's what really got me interested in the subject. And a lot of people don't realize how big Loch Ness, uh, Loch Ness is. It's um, 22 miles long, um, roughly a mile wide, and at its deepest point, about 800 feet. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's, it's really it's a, dark water. Yeah, too. really dark yeah. water. And that's caused by the peat mm. that comes down and the mud that comes down from the mountains that surround the loch. So it's a very, very large body of water. Um, so, you know, if the Loch Ness monsters, whatever they are, are, you know, if they take their water, excuse me, their oxygen from the water, then chances are you're not going to see them surface that often. Um, my personal opinion, having investigated the reports, is I don't think personally that it's um, like a still living dinosaur, like the plesiosaur. I think the Scottish Tourist Board would love it if, you know, there was a real live dinosaur in Loch Ness. My personal opinion, and John and Richard, the two guys I work with, we've kind of come to a tentative conclusion, at least, that these creatures are very, probably, very, very large giant eels. Um, eels? Eels, yeah. Now, you know, if you're confronted with an eel that's sort of 25 feet long with a body the size of an oil drum... I don't think most people would quibble with whether or not that's a monster. <laughs> you know, <it's, laughs> I think it's kind of a moot point if it's a plesiosaur or a 30-foot long eel that's about to charge you. Um, I think that there's certain characteristics that point in that direction. But in saying that, you know, we, we could be proven wrong and it, it could really be something that's survived extinction. I think that's one of the interesting things about all these mysteries. People love the fact that they're still a mystery rather than something that's, oh, it was just a big eel after, after all. Well, I think Jurassic Park had a lot to do with that. That mm. really yeah. stemmed at, you know, piqued <laughs> everybody's interest again in the fact that, well, of course, they were cloning things, yeah. but, you know, that things could survive. There are places in, yeah. on the world that have never been explored, really. No, that's right. And I think what a lot of people kind of enjoy is the fact that, in today's world, which where we think we know everything that's going on and it's kind of all black and white, I think the idea that there could be things we haven't discovered appeals to people, you know, the excitement that what's in the woods or the forests or the jungles, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and that's not to take away from, you know, the fact that we're trying to 
solve these mysteries. It's just that people do love mysteries. Um, and sometimes, you know, if you solve the mystery and it's a little bit... Benign. But yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, people, <laughs> people get disappointed that it wasn't what they hoped it would be. But, yeah. you know, yeah. I just try and go with where the facts are. So. Now, with the eels being the size they are, like, is Loch Ness, is that like a heavily fished, is that a heavily uh, well, populated you know, area, or is it just kind of... Well, that's actually a good question because one of the things that's been put against the idea of it being a colony of plesiosaurs is that these were sort of voracious, flesh-eating animals. Mm, yeah. And various studies have been done to suggest that although Loch Ness does have a sizable fish co uh, content, like salmon, etc., you know, questions have been asked as to whether or not a creature that solely lives on, on flesh, you know, if there was enough to actually support a large colony and a colony big enough to remain healthy and, you know, breed over the course yeah. of thousands of years. And that's yeah. one of the arguments against that. But, you know, if you've got a, a creature like a, an eel, which, you know, its eating habits are a little bit different, that might kind of, again, explain some of the discrepancies or some of the skeptics' arguments. And here's something else. Uh, when I was growing up, I'm from Maryland, mm -hmm. and uh, we had... Uh, we took a field trip, and it was uh, just a flooded town. You know, they made a dam out of it, you know, and mm -hmm. the dam was a power plant. Well, I mean, it was hum or humongously deep, if that's mm -hmm. even. I mean, they flooded an entire town. Well, uh, inside the, the power plant, when you're walking through, they have, like, pictures that they've captured of mm -hmm. catfish that are, like, the size of whales. Yeah. Mm. Because it's such a, like, it's not yeah. a touristly populated area. Yeah. It's such deep waters. That the fish are just getting huge. Yeah. You know, so I mean, that technically, yeah, an eel could get that big mm -hmm. if it's just kind of living its life down there. Yeah, I mean, some people, you know, do think that at least certain lake monster reports probably are of things like catfish and sturgeon, things yeah. like that, which yeah. do grow big. Now, of course, if you're in a rowing a boat across a big lake and a large catfish, let's just say its back breaks the water and it's just up there for, you know, a few seconds or whatever you can easily understand how lake monster legends begin. Um, and I think in some cases, you know, the term monster, although it's an exciting one, it's, it's an overused one. It's not that accurate. All we're really looking for is, you know, animals that science either thinks have become extinct or science doesn't even believe they exist in the first place. They're not mm. literal monsters. You know, monsters is more the the selling point, I guess, from the Hollywood. publisher's perspective, Hollywood, yeah. etc. Yeah. yeah. Now, there's a, a monster, or I'll say monster because it would be a monster to me. Uh, you've researched Thunderbirds, and this goes yeah. back to you were talking about, you know, the dinosaurs and stuff. Mm. Uh, Thunderbirds being birds that have, I mean, huge, huge wingspans of over 100 feet uh, wingspan. Uh, yeah. How often do you run into stories like that? Well, actually, they're, they're surprisingly common down on the Texas-Mexico border. Those are called cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen some of those, actually. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you get a lot of reports, which um, most of the reports, I would stress, the wingspan people are talking about is sort of 15 to 20 feet. Oh, okay. And certainly there shouldn't be anything that scale. That's still big. That's still big. But the, on, on the fossil record, there actually were giant birds of that size. And, of course, the pterodactyl, which, you know, was, was a di actually a dinosaur, but, you know, for all intents and purposes, it just looked like a, a modern-day large bird, I guess, in some respects, but more leathery than feathered. Um, so, you know, there were large flying creatures around in the Jurassic period and in the fossil record. The big question, of course, is whether or not any of them have survived till today. Now, of course, this gets really controversial because it's one thing to, you know, have people say that something could exist in a, a large lake 20 or 30 miles long and a 1,000 feet deep. It's a completely different thing to have people say 20-foot size wingspan birds are flying across the United States. Well, I mean, there's also yeah. reports of them, though, picking up kids. Uh, yeah. I've, I've read and stuff like that. So. I also yeah. heard that maybe Mothman was, yeah. was inter intertwined with that, too. Yeah, the Mothman story that from the film and book, The Mothman Prophecies, is this, again, this weird, I guess, kind of like a glowing-eyed, flying gargoyle, some people have almost described it as like a bat-winged gargoyle. Um, I think Mothman, however you define what the paranormal and the supernatural might be, I think that's more 
falls into that kind of category, like almost like a ghostly type thing, yeah. than, than it does straightforward flesh and blood animal. So sometimes, you know, we go out looking for things that you begin, you know, with like a zoologist's head on your shoulders and you end up kind of looking at it from the perspective of a ghost hunter almost. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, some of these things are harder to resolve than others. If you're just tuning in with us, we're talking to Nick Redfern. Uh, he is an author of UFOs and cryptozoology. We're actually talking cryptozoology now. And uh, if you have a question or comment, uh, want to talk about anything you may have seen or heard of, give us a call, 304-214-1600, toll-free, 866-514-1600. Uh, Nick, my question is, you know, you've, d you've been doing this for a number of years, correct? Yes. yes. What, what is the most interesting uh, monster story? Uh, what, what, what's the most cryptid or most interesting cryptid that you're, you're kind of fond of right now? Um, well, I don't know if I'm fond of it. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what, what draws no, you? What, you what, what, what sucks you in? Um, I would actually say probably the, the Chupacabra stories. And I think one of the reasons why is because Puerto Rico is actually a relatively small island. Yeah. Um, and unlike, say, for example, you know, if you're going to go hunt, Bigfoot in the woods of the Pacific Northwest, you know, you've got hundreds, of, literally hundreds and hundreds of square miles of forest to get through. Puerto Rico, you know, you can land in San Juan and the El Yonqui rainforest, where a lot of the reports have surfaced from, is only like an hour's drive away. And, you know, if you're there, as I've done, you know, for a week or two at a time, you get plenty of time to meet the, meet the witnesses, take them into your confidence, you know, they realize you're not going to poke fun at them and actually get a lot of work and investigations done in a relatively quick time and, and small environment. And I think the quality of the reports and the fact that people like, as I said, the police and veterinarians take it seriously is interesting. And, um, you know, it, at the same time, it's fun and exciting to chase a bat wing monster around <laughs> the rainforest instead of working nine to five. So. <laughs> I knew there was a method to your there you madness. Go, there you go. <laughs> you gotta love your job. That's exactly. <laughs> now, uh, have you ever done any studies on the Men in Black? You know, I actually have. I wrote a book called On the Trail of the Source of Spies, which is a, a whole study, like a historical study of Men in Black reports. You know, a lot of people think the Men in Black were just Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones <laughs> in the film. But they weren't? The, <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, sorry to uh, <laughs> dispel the myth. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, the, the film itself was actually based upon existing stories of people who said they'd seen UFOs, and then shortly afterwards these weird guys in black suits, sunglasses, hats, driving black cars would turn up and warn them not to talk about their experiences. And I think there's some evidence that at least some of these people are government employees, military people, whose job it is to investigate reports. And um, I actually think they kind of use the men in black mythology as a way, not because that's how they normally dress, but, you know, if somebody talks about their experiences, they just get, they get laughed at or told they're crazy for saying, you know, the men in black visited them. But if you oh. think about it, it's a good ploy to put on that kind of air and atmosphere because it guarantees that the person probably won't speak out about the experience. So I think a lot of these reports can be traced back to secret groups that investigate reports of this type so. now in uh you know we talked about the mothman a minute ago mm. in the book mothman prophecies uh the, you know they talked in detail about the men in black mm. and a lot of it i want to say it it appeared as though the they were alien like themselves yeah the rather than government no you're right i mean the, the many black reports seem to fall into two categories and i mentioned this in the book one is where some of them are clearly military people, but then you get other ones that are kind of weirder, where almost as one witness described them as being, quote, creepy. Um, you know, they just didn't look normal. A lot of reports of them being very short, like five foot thin, very pale. One witness said that the, the look that the guy had on his face all the time was just like the look on a dog before it's about to bite you. <laughs> you know, that kind of that weird stare at the corner of its eye. Yeah. Um, now, you know, to people who don't know much about this subject, it sounds crazy, but then you find there are people all across the U.S. not knowing each other, having no background or knowledge of the subject, all telling very, very eerily similar stories. 
about run-ins with these many black type creatures and so you know i think when you when you come across these types of reports and as i said the people don't really know each other and yet they're talking about the same thing then it, you have to ask the question what would be the motivation and and how would they all pick up on different stories many of which have never been published you know they're just stories that end up in files because the people don't want the stories told so. now are you as as versed in ufology as you are cryptids yeah i've written about six books on cryptozoology and six or seven on ufos and one on hollywood scandals <laughs> hollywood <laughs> scandals how did you get that one thrown in <laughs> bored one day That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no actually what it is uh, i wrote a book called celebrity secrets and it was basically a study of how from the 40s onwards the fbi secretly watched a lot of hollywood stars mm -hmm. um now everybody knows people like uh, frank sinatra was being watched because of mafia and mob links uh -huh. um marilyn monroe because of her links with the kennedys but when i started using the freedom of information act which is a piece of government legislation that allows you access to government files. Which I'm surprised ever got passed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, what I found was that literally dozens of Hollywood stars are being watched from the 40s onwards. Some you'd never even imagine. John Wayne, Abbott and Costello. Really? Yeah. Um, Abbott and Costello being watched for? Well, Probably believe, communist ties, right? Actually, no, it wasn't. No? Believe it or not, Abbott and Costello from about the late, sorry, early 40s to be a mid 50s between the two of them um, possessed almost the biggest collection of porn movies in hollywood <laughs> like but, a, you know what? Oh, hoover man. just wanted them for himself yeah. that was that was the deal on that yeah but uh, basically what it was j edgar hoover was trying to get them prosecuted um because he thought these were like bootleg films and they were showing them and you know, he wasn't he, getting his cut. He wasn't yeah. getting his cut, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. uh, John Wayne, would that be uh, communist ties? Or? No, it was actually the exact opposite. The, yeah, he the FBI was... heard rumors because he was very patriotic. and yeah. uh, uh, Republican. Republican, yeah. yeah. They'd heard that um, there were rumors flying around that he was trying to fund the overthrow of um, an extreme government in South America. Oh. Now... Whether or not there was any truth to it is kind of a vague area, but they investigated him. But they evidently weren't disapproving because he later did voiceovers and things like that for documentaries about the FBI, so um, they it didn't, didn't do him any harm. They didn't hate him too much. <laughs> no, no. With all of your the um, Freedom of Information Acts, how much of that stuff was actually blacked out? You know, on the FBI files, it's quite a bit. I mean, there's... People call it the Freedom of Information Act, but, yeah, there's, but there's actually like seven or eight clauses and legislations in the Act itself to allow the government to withhold files on issues like national security, defense, privacy, medical issues, all sorts of things. And, you know, I think the, uh, they probably keep the black marker industry in business. Uh. I think so, too. <laughs> and how would we even know if we had the complete file in the first place? You yeah, know, I mean, for know. example, there was a, there's an FBI file on Errol Flynn, the yeah. swashbuckling actor of the 40s. His file is about 400 pages long. I would say of that 400 pages, maybe, maybe 40 percent has been declassified, and the rest is just blacked out. Did they have anything on Rudolph Valentino? Um, I think there is a file on him, but I think it was just a small one. I know there were some files that were so small, I just didn't use them. I just went for the more juicy, <laughs> scandalous <laughs> gotcha. stories. So. Uh, that's well, totally that's, understood. That's a now, book now, I want to read. Was there any, uh, like, UFO admissions of any not, kind? Not in those files, but, I mean, the FBI actually do have large, I guess what you could call real X-files. They, they have files on... Um, investigation files they carried out on UFOs, on so-called cattle mutilations, you know, these weird reports that surface now and again around the U.S. of cattle found drained of blood and organs removed. They did a big, big investigation of that in the 70s. They've even got report, a file, which is about a 150-page file, on what's become known as spontaneous combustion, yeah, where people that. reportedly just burst into flames yeah. for no reason. So there's a file on that uh, with the FBI. Um, in the 1950s, they opened um, a series of documents to see if ESP and psychic powers were real. So um, you, you did publish a book, uh, the FBI files on the UFO top secrets, correct? 
from yeah, the that's FBI. correct. Yeah, okay. yeah. They, they've correct. declassified altogether, I would say, about 3,000 pages of documents that relate to UFOs, or maybe a few more, covering the 40s, pretty much through to the 90s, after which point things seem to have tailed off. Um, but the earlier years, when they were, I suppose, at the forefront of things, and there's, you know, for, even for the skeptics, it's kind of surprising that there's a lot of good quality reports from pilots and radar operators who said they tracked UFOs, police officers. Again, you know, people who are trained to know what goes on in the skies, and, and they were reporting these sightings, and the FBI was sending guys out to investigate them. So again, it's like a real, I guess, like a real Mulder and Scully type scenario. Wow. Okay, now here's a question. Mm. Since you have done all of this investigating, mm. how much of the particularly UFO stories mm. do you believe? Well, you know, I think whether it's UFOs, cryptozoology, or any aspect of, you know, weird investigation. Weird science? Yeah, I think what I would say that most cases, most people I think are genuine. You know, I think you can easily spot a faker and a hoaxer or a fantasist. I think most people are genuine. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of cases where people have, for example, misidentified things in good faith. You know, they're not lying. They see, right. they see something hairy in the woods and it turns out to be a bear, but maybe they're not used to seeing a bear standing on its hind legs, as they do occasionally, yeah. and they mistake it. But in saying that, I think with all these subjects, there's a small percentage that have in the past and continue today to defy normal explanation. You know, maybe, I, I, I wouldn't be able to put an exact figure on it, but I would say, you know, 5 to 15% that seem very, very weird, and that upon investigation, we just don't have the answers, and they seem to fall out the category of hoaxing or misidentification and very often you know you have high quality witnesses as well which is a good thing so you know I, i'm kind of encouraged by that so I, I think if i was able to resolve everything as a hoax or a you know a fake or a fantasy i think i'd have given up a long time ago let me interrupt you real quick uh mike if you're out there i accidentally hung up on you I'm, I'm learning the buttons here, and I messed it up. So give a call back, and Lola will take care of you. Mike from Arizona? Uh, probably. <coughs> okay. Yeah, Mike, call me back. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry about that, Nick. Oh, that's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was trying to answer the phone call because Lola was asking a question because she, oh, okay. she likes for me to try to do things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to train him. <laughs> and, and like most things, I, uh, I dropped the ball. <laughs> it happens. Now, uh, you also have a book here on Roswell, which mm. I, I'm, we don't get to talk too much on Roswell. Roswell mm. is, of course, one of my favorite. Uh-oh. Uh, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite. Now, it, it says here, the horrible truth of the heart of the Roswell mm. story. Okay, what is uh, the horrible body truth? Body snatchers in the desert, horrible yeah, truth. Yeah, well, for the most part, I have kind of a good, fairly good relationship with fellow researchers and authors, but body snatchers was the one that kind of painted me almost as, to some people, like a cross between Saddam Hussein and Adolf Hitler. Oh, <laughs> it was, what I basically did was to write a book that suggested that what happened at Roswell might not have involved aliens, but involved a classified military experiment. Oh, really? Yeah. And the, the story itself wasn't... People thought it was me telling the story. What it basically was, I interviewed about seven elderly old-timers from the military uh, who were all literally in their 70s onwards, one or two in their 80s, and who said that they were aware of secret balloon-based experiments that had been carried out in the New Mexico deserts in the late 40s to test the effects of high-altitude exposure on human beings, and because this was a subject that wasn't very well known at that particular time. And they collectively said that a number of these balloon experiments were undertaken and in some cases actually crashed off the test sites and were uncovered by the general public. They were the first to get there. And, of course, the fear was that if the Russians, who were known to be spying in New Mexico at the time, because that's where the atomic bomb was developed, yeah. if they got word of the fact that we were flying um, highly classified, very, very strong balloons that could be used for spying purposes at high altitude, then you know, that could potentially be a national security issue. And the story I got was that they started spreading these stories 
of weather balloons and flying saucers just to confuse people and keep them off the real okay. track, not realizing that 50 years later it would develop into a huge industry oh, yeah. and cover up allegations. Now, of course, people have said quite legitimately, well, how do you know that the people you interviewed weren't lying to you to hide the fact that aliens really did crash? And, of course, the, the fact is, and my answer can only be that that could be the case. Yeah. You know, I wasn't dogmatic about the theory. What I did was just to present their testimony and say, hey, you know, can we take this any further in either direction and just see where it leads? And their so, story is just as valid as anybody else's out there, I mean, of course. Yeah, so. but, I mean, I'll be the first to admit it's, you know, nobody in the UFO subject wants to hear that aliens didn't crash at Roswell. Yeah, oh, exactly. Hey, we got um, a phone call real quick. Okay. Yeah, this is Mike from Mesa. Hey, Mike. Sorry about that. Sorry, Mike. That's okay, man. <laughs> this is Nick I'm talking to. Hey, Mike. Hey, how are you? Good, thanks. i got a question. There's uh, the lights over Phoenix that were reported years ago. Yeah. Do you have any information on that at all? Yeah, the, the Phoenix lights. This was a case in 1997 when this triangular or delta formation of lights were seen flying over Phoenix at at night at very very low level um, and that's one of the reasons why this case stood out and interested so many people because it wasn't like a sighting of a you know flying saucer that just zipped in and zipped out it was like a flying very low very slow and a lot of people caught it on film and with camcorders and um, even the military came out with an explanation when they were pressed and said oh it, it's just flares military flares but that didn't explain why these things were seemingly flying in formation. Now, there's been a lot of reports over the last 10, 15 years of these triangular delta-shaped lights and black triangular-shaped things flying across the skies of America, Britain, Russia, Australia, mainland Europe, all sorts of places. And they look almost, as some people have described them, like a next-generation stealth aircraft. Mm -hmm. And some people think that's what they are. But other people you know, point to the fact that some of these things seem to be like 200 feet long, flying in complete silence, having the ability to hover and then fly off at high speeds, where the G-forces, you know, would just pulverize a pilot. So there's a lot of, you know, theories that these could be some sort of UFO. I think the interesting thing about the Phoenix Lights uh, that a lot of people have picked up on is the fact that it was if they wanted to be seen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that they made no attempt to you know, hide behind clouds or zip off at high speed. It was almost like a show, whether it was a show of force or, as some people think, to, you know, acclimatize people to the idea that they exist. Who knows? But uh, there seemed to be a definite intent behind, and the intent was to, to be seen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I remember seeing part of that mm. uh, driving home one night, and they were pretty much in perfect formation, mm -hmm. which a lot of people uh, said they were flares from military aircraft yeah. because we do have a couple military bases out here. They kind of seem to be too perfect for that. Yeah, that and was the thing. Even though yeah. that's what they look like. Mm. So yeah, that, that's the one thing that put people, a lot of people off the flare idea. Not the fact that, you know, singly they, could, they did look or kind of look like flare-type lights. But then you had the problem that they're almost like in a, in a perfect, perfectly symmetrical delta-shaped line. Right. Um, and that, I suppose, in many people's minds, got rid of the idea that these were just random flares, you know, being dropped by parachutes in the skies. That they were just too precise in their, right. in their that's, flying motion. Right, that's kind of the information that came out here, yeah. too, when that happened. It mm. was just military... I've seen military stuff happen out here because mm -hmm. in Arizona, you know, we have a lot of pretty clear nights, so you yeah. can see a lot of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I see, you know, meteor showers all the time. Yeah. Have you ever I, seen a UFO, Mike? No, nope, I haven't personally, to tell you the truth, but I've seen things that I wonder about. I, I do know there was one time where uh, many years ago where they talked about you'll be able to see the space shuttle coming out of the uh, northwest sky heading to the northeast. Yeah. And I actually went outside and sat there thinking, this ain't going to happen. And lo and behold, there it went. Oh, wow. It took like four or five seconds, and it was in, and it was gone. 
and I guess it's just reflection of the off the sun, but it, it went. You know, Arizona sky is pretty pretty uh, open most of the time. And like I said, I've seen a lot of things. I've seen actual vapor trails from a missile shot up out of New Mexico. Oh wow! In the, in you know in the mornings, I never actually saw the flare of it, but I have seen jets that have flown way out west. 40, 50 miles away where they hit the afterburners, and you can see that, and you wonder, what the heck was that? Oh, that's that's neat. But, you know, th this one I'm kind of curious about because, like I said, I just, I noticed the one night, and I just kind of looked, and I just thought, ah, oh, no big deal, because you see that kind of all the time in different ways. Didn't really pay attention to it, and then when I saw it where somebody recorded it, I think from Ahwatukee or South Mountain somewhere, and I'm like, boy, that's awful perfect. Those, if they were flares, they were awful perfect. So you may have seen a UFO, Mike. Yeah. Well, maybe, but you know, like I said, I was heading the other direction and looking back, and I didn't, you know, really didn't think about it. And Not until afterwards. I mean, the, thing, the thing with flares is they they fall. I mean, that's you know, because mm -hmm. I used to live in Camp La, near Camp Lejeune, and they fire flares off all the time, and they they, they, well, they kind of. You kind of see a little bit of a vapor. You see the smoke, and they start falling. I mean, it's slow, but they don't go. They fall down. They don't fall across the sky. Yeah, well, yeah. the Phoenix Lights, and Nick, you might be able to help on this one. It went the entire state almost of Arizona, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, this was, you know, this was, as I said, a slow-moving object, relatively slow, and took its time, and that's why it was seen by so many people and, and got so much attention. Like, we're talking, like, millions of people, or yeah, I mean, you're tens lucky, of thousands. Yeah, you're lucky, really, with UFO reports, if one or two people see it, you know, driving home late at night, it flies in, it zips off. That wasn't the case with the, Fli the Phoenix Lights. It was totally different. And they had it on the UFO Hunter show. I mean, when we had Lynn, uh, Lynn Kitai, mm -hmm. uh, that night when I went home to watch the UFO Hunters, they actually shot the flares up into the sky mm -hmm. and tested had it. witnesses that had seen the you know the lights. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Lynn was one of them that was there watching, and they also well, that doesn't look anything like it. I mean, yeah. you could see the smoke. I mean, it just didn't yeah. look right. anything at all like yeah. what they saw. Well, Mike, thank you very much for your call. All right, man. thanks for listening. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, uh, Nick. I, we're we're running running low on time here for you, and uh, I, I want to find out what's the scariest monster. Uh, you've investigated so far the scariest one. Um, I think the the, the scariest one. Uh, I, I don't really get scared doing investigation. I think more ominous and creepy is a British um, creature that's become known as the Owl Man, which is like a British equivalent of Mothman. And although Owl Man sounds kind of like a cheesy, <laughs> stupid <laughs> name, it's it's basically described as like a creature with glowing eyes and these large outstretched wings and appears at times that that's you know when people are i guess in stress and frightened and things like that it appears in this one area of woodland in england and it's and it's kind of almost like a a grim reaper type creature in some respects i suppose so it's it's kind of more creepy and supernatural but it's its appearance has made it fall into like the the cryptozoological field because of the wings etc yeah now uh in your book there's something in the woods mm. What's in the woods? That's creepy, Sam. Well, <laughs> that, that, that title in the book cover, I, we, we have all your books uh, on oh, our good. website to where you can uh, oh, cool, click on thanks. them and go to where I'm you can buy them. add some more, I think. I think okay, I still thanks. missed some. I'm going back through the list again. I was like, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the cover of uh -huh. There's Something in the Woods. Well, that's, that and, book's basically um, a two-year road trip. When my wife and I moved back to England for a while in 2006, she hadn't hardly ever spent any time there, so we, <laughs> we went back so she could see the country, and he yeah. gave me the chance to also investigate a lot of things so there's a lot of reports of bigfoot um big cats on the loose um even werewolf reports giant birds um just about anything weird you could imagine living in the woods i investigated it for that book so i, I see one here the dark men of the woods is one of the the chapter 14 what what exactly is that i have to ask and how is that not scary? <laughs> well, that's actually like a, a weird story that kind of crosses cryptozoology and the paranormal. It actually dealt with a couple who'd seen a Bigfoot-type creature in the forests of Oklahoma. And it, following this experience, they began to have all sorts of strange experiences in their own home, like poltergeist experiences and seeing these shadowy 
dark man type figures. Oh, wow. Um, it's kind of like the shadow people kind Yeah, of exactly, thing? like shadow okay. people. And, and so it kind of came across as initially as like a regular, if there's such a regular thing as a Bigfoot sighting. But then it kind of developed from there into paranormal overtones. And huh. a lot of cryptozoologists don't like dealing with as- that aspect of the subject. But for me, I think if people are reporting it, whatever you personally think of it, you've got to investigate it. Sure. Rather than just go with the idea that some people just want it to be Bigfoot to be a big lumbering ape or whatever. Okay, we have another caller if you don't mind answering. No, no, that's well, fine. She, she wanted me to ask you the question. Some oh, okay. people get kind of tongue-tied when they get on the okay. air, unlike me. <laughs> um, but she, Have you ever heard of a Colonel Corso? Yes. Was, oh, okay. Um, have, I don't know if he's still alive or anything. No, he's but, not. Okay. He, Colonel Corso, uh, Philip Corso, he wrote a book in 1997 called The Day After Roswell. And at the time, he was like 82, and I think he lived about another year or two after that. Um, and Corso claims that when he was with the Army in the um, early 1960s, that he was shown some of the technology, supposedly the alien technology, recovered at Roswell. Oh, wow. And claims that it was um, used, like in, ex- in experiments, back engineering experiments, yeah. to try and boost our technology today. And he talked about things like night vision equipment and fiber optics. Microwaves although re- or yeah, something, too. Yeah, although research was being done into these areas already, he kind of talked about the idea of their technology gave ours a kick start and, you know, opened new doors. I've heard that. Yeah. Now, a lot of people, you know, agree with Corso's story. They think he's genuine. Others don't. But even for those who don't, no one's really come up with a good explanation as to why suddenly an 82-year-old retired U.S. Army colonel should come out with this story. Did he also say that he saw the dead aliens? Um, yeah, well, he said he saw one. Okay. He, he said he read autopsy reports and he saw wow. one. Um, but Do that you was, believe him? Well, you know, it's, that's one of the frustrating things about stories like Corsa. On the one hand, he's dead, so we can't, we're not <laughs> yeah. really able to take the yeah. story any further. Yeah. On the other hand, you know, you, you have to question why would an 82-year-old man write a book like this, open himself up to all the stress and questions and probing that, would be, uh, that did well, occur? Maybe he knew that, you know, he didn't have too much more time and wasn't afraid yeah. of anything coming down on him anymore. No, that's right. I agree. I mean, you know, the, that's, the, that's the thing with his story. He did have the credibility of, of being a respected military colonel. So, you know, we have to... We have to you know, go with yeah. that. Nick, I, uh, I, I want to thank you. That's all. Yeah, That's we're, all right. we're at the top of the hour. we got to go to the sorry. news. I want to thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we're definitely going to get back in touch with you. I've enjoyed this, and i got a lot more yeah. questions. So uh, yeah, you'll be great. hearing for us, uh, from us again. All right. Thanks, and, uh, guys. Thank you very much for, right. for spending some time with us. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Uh, that's Nick Redford. Uh, you can Fern. check him out. Red <laughs> Nick Fern. What are you doing? Red Fern. Sorry, and you can check him out uh, on our website, whispersradio.com. We got all of his books listed there and uh, links to his websites. And, uh, uh, Nick Redfern as a dot net. Uh, we'll be right back on AM 1600 WKKX, The Valley's Watchdog. <laughs> And welcome back to Whispers on AM 1600 WKKX, the Valley's Watchdog. It is 7.09. We are in our second hour. Uh, remember that our second hour is dedicated to you guys, our local stories, our call-ins. Uh, if you got something paranormal going on, you've heard a story, you've seen something, give us a call, 304-214-1600, uh, 866-514-1600. That's toll-free. And uh, this time is yours, so fill up those lines. We also got some... Uh, well, we've got some stories, of, you know... Of course, if you want to tell us what you thought about our guest, I mean, it's usually when we get done, we're like maybe five minutes left. and Yeah, we chit-chat. We chat-chat real quick, run off the air, and nobody gets to tell us, you know, what they thought. I mean, you know. I, you I like the guest. I, I, I did, did, too. I think he was very credible, and he said it, you know, outright. 
I investigate. Yeah. It's yeah. not like he doesn't know, say it's, it's real. He believes it or he doesn't believe it. He said, this is what we looked into. We ran well, cold. I mean, the thing with Perry. And I think what made him credible is he had the British accent. Well, you pointed at me, but <laughs> I, I, the British accent, you know, he could be on here saying he could be a kook and we believe him. We, well, that's like every Irish <laughs> well, guest we've had. Yeah. We believed everything they've said. <laughs> you know. Oh, the lucky charm. The earth is hollow. Look, yes, yes, sir. It sure is. We got a caller. Yes, we do. It's Sandy. Hi, Hi Sandy. Sandy. Hi, yes, I want to tell you about the book I've written. Oh, my <laughs> God. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. She's the most credible person we've ever had. Nice. <laughs> uh-huh. oh. I wanted to know, Lola, did you get the pictures I Yes, you? yes, yes. Uh, okay. Did you show them to the fellas? Yes, we've I did. Looked. We were just looking at them on the break. I have them oh. in front of me as we speak. Oh, well, see how psychic I was to Let me... call... <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah, how. Well, he had the envelope yeah. up on his head, and he's like, I'm thinking of the person. Yeah, yeah I was trying to do a Karnak thing. Yeah. Was oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, now, oh. looking at the pictures, and for those of you out there, it uh, looks like a part of a prom picture. Well, actually, it says it was Halloween. Halloween. They Is were it? going out for Halloween, yeah. Oh, oh I, I just see the guy in the top hat. It's yeah. got that bright orb next to it. Now, yeah. Uh, like, uh, that, uh, as yeah. I said in the letter, that's exactly the closet that my brother-in-law's mother's ashes are in. Now, how, how close in proximity is the uh, urn to the ash? Or uh, what? The urn to well, the I'm orb. guessing the ashes are in the urn. Okay, easy. I, well, that well the they're, it, they're actually in a box. I well, know, but where they, okay, where the biggest one is, yeah, that, are they like directly behind it? No, it's oh. up above it. It's okay. up above it. Okay. Well, but still. Now, th- now on, I looked at them. The one in the bottom, the bigger one, is the one. And if, if thank you, I was going to say, if you can hold that up for me since you're in front of me. It's, um, it's I mean, right almost at the bottom, it's big. It kind of looks like it's got a glow to it. And that's the one. The other two look like they're sort of, I don't know, I, it'd be hard to tell on those. Now, see, with well, orbs, you you get a lot of different classifications of orbs, and your cameras will... There's a lot of things that your cameras will pick up. Uh, there's dust, moisture. I mean, there's so many things that could be classified into the orbs mm-hmm. that uh, usually Nick and I don't really, like, if we see an orb on a picture, we're like, well, let's see if we can get anything else other than that just in case. Well, the orbs but, seem to only show up when pictures are taken in that house. Really? Mm-hmm. Now, the, uh, and the, as I said, my mother died in that house, too. And the the one at the bottom... You know, it's got like a glow around it, and that's uh-huh. what we would call a supercharged orb. Uh-huh. Okay, for the for those uh, up the, the, taking out your yeah. notebooks, write that down. Professor Jordan, go ahead. <laughs> those are called supercharged orbs, which would and, and if you look really closely, it has it has like a little trail behind it, which uh-huh. means whatever it is was moving faster than the shutter. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. so that that gives that a little bit more credit. And sometimes that'll also those that can be bugs, that can be all kinds of different things. I wouldn't say that's a bug. Well, I know I'm just saying if it's moving faster than the shutter, you know that a bug could oh, cause. Oh, you like know that. my sister doesn't have bugs. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you heard it from Nick. That was Nick that said that. So Listen, when we get a call I have later, another, I have another uh, story to tell you. Uh-huh. When, when my mother died, okay. Um, the funeral uh, director came to remove her body and take it to the funeral home. Uh-huh. And my sister and I went to the kitchen to kind of realize what had just happened, and, and we sat out there for a while drinking coffee, and then we decided somewhere around 3 o'clock that we should go to bed. Well, I said I, was, I had all that coffee in me. I couldn't go to bed. So <laughs> I sat down on the floor with my back up against my brother-in-law's easy chair, and my sister went to bed. And all of a sudden, you know how you can feel the presence of somebody walking down the hall yeah. or walking, walking behind you? Yeah. 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 And, that, and, and I clearly felt like they folded their arms up over the back of that chair, and I thought it was going to be my sister to tell me something she forgot. Mm-hmm. I turned around, and there was nobody there. Oh, wow. And that At, feeling of somebody behind you, I mean, that, you know, it's one of those things that almost everybody gets. You think and the hair didn't stand up oh. on the bed? I, I know it was my mom. Now, were my you able mother, to get to bed after that? I, I hopped right in there <laughs> and covered up my head even. It was just, I mean, I loved my mother dearly, but it scared the liver out of me. And it had to be my mother checking on me, and that is something she would have done. 
As long and as she I, didn't chuck you in the bed, that would have been I, too much. Yeah. I know, but that, and that's a God's truth. That um, I mean, I felt the presence of somebody behind me, and I looked around, and there was no one there. Yes, that's one of the reasons I always try to sit with my back like away from. I know. Like, I always you know, sit my because I hate that feeling. Yeah, yeah. I always feel like I'm looking behind me and stuff. I tell my friends all good pet girls sit with their back to the door. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're um, going to try to scan those pictures and put them online for people to take a look at. Is that okay with you? Or? That's fine. That's fine. Okay. That's and, I'll, fine. and I'll write down the letter or type it into the into the computer. Or that w- that way we can up. get everybody else's opinion, too, that can look at it. And, okay. Uh, and, uh, Very there's, good. There's people out there that, that study orbs pretty in-depth. So uh, you never know what we might get from it. Okay. Hey, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, thank, you. thank you. Bye-bye. And we also got some other pictures, and I'm going to have to show you those. Uh, I uh, got We got them from a lady named Linda that we've been talking back and forth with on uh, over email. And, uh, Linda, I do have the pictures. I've uh, taken the – or I'm sorry, not pictures. What am I thinking of? EVPs. Uh, I have listened to some of them. I want to listen to them again. You know, my – my computer. I finally got the speakers actually loud, but I do want to hear them uh, perhaps on your your Super Macintosh that you have because it's just much clearer, and so you can take a listen to them. For anybody out there that has a a computer, Nick needs one because his brand my, new one sucks. I'm I'm I am going to be calling ASUS and getting them to take this one back and get me a new one. <laughs> you, you, it, you I've had so much trouble. It's well, crashed it's, like three times. You've only had it for the ratings <laughs> on it is are really high, but sometimes you get you know. Sometimes you get a lemon. You get a, you get a lemon. So it's, it Talk, works. It's working right now. It's recording the show. So Talking about uh, ghost stories, and I want to share this because last week uh, I was down at my great-grandma's funeral, and uh, I was staying with Nick and I's grandmother. And uh, she, our, our grandfather passed away. Uh, how long ago? Uh, been a couple of years, maybe yeah. three almost. I think three this coming Christmas. So uh, he passed away, and I was talking with Granny, and she's telling me that, you know, sometimes – you know, it's like he, he's still there because he was a chain. He was on an oxygen oxygen machine, and he was still a chain smoker. Hmm. And uh, she said every now and then she would smell a puff of smoke. You know, and nobody smokes. You know, in the house. You know, that's just a thing. And you know, she would smell smoke uh, if she's laying in bed. You know, sometimes it'll feel like half the bed's going down, like somebody was climbing into bed. Yeah. Uh, different things like that. Uh, she'll see somebody kind of walk across the hall. Uh, a lamp will start clicking on and off sometimes. Wow. Yeah, all kinds of different stories like that. And I was like, well, I'm going to... And he's honored enough to do all that. Yeah, and this, I was sleeping in the living room, and uh, Nick's mom was there, and it was my Aunt Sherry, and she's saying, oh, well, Daddy won't do nothing to me. You're, she scared me, trying to scare me, but Daddy ain't going to do nothing to me. I'm going to sleep in there. I said, well, he would do that to me. <laughs> you yeah. know, he's, oh, he would do that to her in a heartbeat. <laughs> he, he would mess with me now. <laughs> now, this is somebody, he'd sit there and... Uh, and one of his favorite things to do, he loved teasing and pestering the grandkids. And he'd sit there. And one of the things that always drove me crazy, I have no idea why, and you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. It even drove me crazy, you know, not that long ago. I mean, he, he kind of started getting kind of senile and stuff. And, and, and you could tell when he was starting to go because he'd stop doing this stuff. But he'd sit there and he'd get his finger up and I'll, and I'll do it to Lola, he'd, you know, and start yeah. moving it. Look at it. Yeah. Look at it. I can't. Look You're got it, it. Oh, behind sorry. the mic. Okay. He, he, like, look at it. Watch, watch it. Watch it. Watch it. And it would drive me crazy. And all he would do is sit there and wiggle the finger just a little bit. And I'd be like, and, and I'm I could, sitting there watching it. Yeah. And he's just, and he just keep doing it. And I'm like, stop it. You know. And so this is the kind of personality he had. You know, he was uh-huh. always, you know, doing that kind of stuff. And uh, he'd take the afrin. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And, you know, you wouldn't be paying attention. Next thing you know, he'd take it up close to your face, you know, squeeze it at you. I'm like, oh, my Lord. So, you know, so I, I can see him turning lights on and off, touching, you know, mm-hmm. touching the bed and pour smoking in the house because that drove my grandmother crazy. So, yeah. it's uh, We actually were talking to somebody last week that was talking about uh, they were uh, smelling smoke from somebody that used to, you know, that passed on and used to smoke a lot and no more body nobody else is smoking in the house and they're start and they smell it every now and then so you know the phantom go uh smoking the, the phantom tobacco yeah phantom tobacco smell and i don't know i mean it if there's some remnant of it in the house or something but i i it's my grandmother she as soon as he passed away was the first thing she set out to do 
I mean, we're not the last time. That last time I walked in, there was no smell of smoke in that house. She cleaned it like super cleaned. And we do have a couple of stories I wanted to talk about. Um, well, I pulled both of them up on your computer. Uh, which one do you want to talk about first? Do you want to talk about the picture of the ghost or the? Well, did you look at the slideshow? I no, I did not see the slideshow. That was a different. Right. Uh, is that on the sun? Yeah, this is okay. on the sun. Okay, well, let's talk about that then. The uh, okay. ghost photo baffles experts. Now you've seen you you saw the picture earlier, yeah. right? Yes, yeah. Jordan. Uh, is that the one that that's the one that Dan put on our? Yeah, if you want to go and pull, and pull right. that up, actually, we, uh, since you bring up the forum, I have Pixie Miza has finally fixed the website. Uh, if you want to talk about gremlins getting into, this is the worst problem I've ever. He's ever. He said he's um, never dealt with it. It would not. I come just want to remind you guys. Sure. About something that occurs here on a frequent basis. Uh oh. And I'm not talking about well. <laughs> anyway, um, there's so many things that could we be. We have, you know, our ghosts. Uh huh. And when we decide to talk about them, particularly in the day, the phones get all messed up. Oh, and they just fail, yeah. And here you are with a computer that you can't keep running. Uh huh. Now, do you not think that there could be perhaps some correlation there? Well, oh, I think we're all cursed. We'll be talking about that in a little bit, too. Uh -huh. But, uh,. <laughs> Hey, Jordan. I mean, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it is. I mean, our website just it went down like crazy. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but no, our website and it, it, he tried, he could not reset the password. Of course not. When ghosties get in there, ghost in the machine, the ghost in the machine. The ghost in the machine. Yeah. Are you sure you don't have that uh, bug that's supposed to erupt? Oh, it's a the giant worm. I don't think so. I mean, I I just formatted this one. I've I've got all my defenses up now. Well, they're now saying my, I, it, CBS CBS had that worm several months ago. Really? really? And they cl finally it took them days to clean their whole system out, wow. and they're still not sure they got them all because it's capable of hiding. That's scary stuff. And it, it now mine I uh, I will admit that I probably did something to mess it up the last time. I uh, I agree. To fix, yeah. Trying to yeah. fix something on my computer, and, and Vista is one of those horrible programs. That Everybody it is. that I have, with the exception of my son, uh -huh. now he's got Vista on his laptop, and he hasn't had any problems, but he doesn't do an awful lot of applications sure. either. Yeah. You know, it. He's not a Facebooker. Like no, you. you know he's not. I asked him if he was since I, you know, joined the revolution. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but, it, you know, he doesn't use all that fancy bells and whistles. But everybody else I know, particularly businesses that have Vista, oh, they my God, it. they hate it. And, and the reason I hate it, I, I'm somebody that likes to tinker. When I had my XP, you know, my last laptop, I had XP on it. Um, and it, I could fix stuff. I could change things. And it would work. Here I try to ch do some of the same, same things that should be you know pretty compatible even even the great nick queen has limits and, yeah and we got I, a phone call okay I'll yeah shut we do up. it well but wait before you've <laughs> before got Mac, I shut up. yeah you've he got a, a mac Macintosh now yet. people i never had one because you know it, it, so many people didn't have them and you needed something that was compatible especially like with the greyhounds we had yeah. to have it all mm -hmm. compatible but um now I work with people, and since they have done this thing where, you know, Word documents and everything just transfer sure. over, they love their Mac. Now, you're you see, having, I, got, I got mine for uh, video editing is what I got mine for. Because that's your broadcast, so. and you, you almost yeah. needed it. Yeah. Well, and see, everybody I knew before that had a Mac was in journalism and because that's what the newspapers used, Yeah. you know. Now, do you like your Macintosh? I mean, uh, we, I've, we've talked about this in... You've been growing to well, love it. it. It's it's to the point like I got the brand new one, so not all the programs that I'm used to are compatible with that version of Mac yet. So I just yeah. have to wait, you know, until they decide to put it up, so where I can actually get into it and use it. Well, Mac is less like this worm. Everybody attacks Microsoft, yeah. so Mac because is because there's so many safe. out there. It's yeah. like the elephant in the room compared yeah. to the, yeah. you know, the dog. Okay, this. <laughs> what? Nothing. Dog was just a peculiar choice. No, the okay, dog smaller is than the freaking elephant. I, stop Hi, Don. Hi, guys. Hey, Don. How you doing? Uh, pretty good. How you guys doing? Uh, so far, so good. <laughs> well, at first, I have a, a comment, and then I'll tell you a little story. All right. Uh, uh, the, your guest earlier said something about the owl man. 
Yeah. Uh, did, at any time, does he say, give a hoot, don't pollute? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Anyhow, here's, here's a little story that, you know, happened to me that I, it might be a ghost, it might not be, I don't know. All right. Uh, the, the house I live in, I kind of took care of the people, the old people that lived here before. Yeah. And um, I suppose these folks was probably married 60 years or better, I don't know, they was fairly old. And the husband had died maybe a year beforehand to the to the older lady. Well, she was getting pretty close to death, and, you know, I had her brought home and had a hospice nurse and everything for her. And it, it was in the last day. And I was sitting in the kitchen with the hospice nurse, and we were sitting there, and she was getting pretty close. Yeah. And, we, and she was, you know, sedated and just pretty much waiting for it to happen. So all of a sudden I hear her talking in the bedroom and she's saying talking to Kenny which is her husband mm-hmm. just carrying on a conversation and I walked in there and she's sitting up talking about 10 minutes later she was gone oh wow, wow. and you know <laughs> if it was in her mind if it was Kenny but the thing that was weird she was pretty well you know drugged up mm-hmm you know, she was almost comatose, and she was just, you know, not sitting up, getting ready to jump up out of bed, but she was sitting up speaking coherently. It kind of makes you wonder whether or not that's the point where she's going through that tunnel, you know, to the it, light. It, yeah, it, and how much of that is in a person's mind? How much of that is actually happening? Who, I don't know. But it, it, you know, it, it should have scared the heck out of me, but it didn't because I knew them both and I cared for both of them, and, but it was... If it was someone else other than me, I bet you they'd have run out of the house because it was it was weird. Yeah, um, and you know she just and she was she didn't see me. Look, wasn't looking at me. She was looking at somebody who wasn't there. That's somebody I didn't see. I think our grandfather saw angels. Is yeah. that my my mom saw her mom and her sisters, and that's who she was carrying on conversations with yeah. until they finally drugged her to the point where. She wasn't aware anymore, well, but that's that's the thing that was really weird because she was on uh, some some really strong. She had a thyroid and it was really getting big, and, and you had to kind of keep her sedated, keep yeah. her comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And she was really out of it. That's why I had to have a nurse here because I wasn't able to do that. The nurse had to actually give her this. Yeah, and the nurse looked at me and said she shouldn't be awake. Now she was wide awake. Wow. Well, see, you talk to Amanda and. Um, and and she'll tell you probably like similar to this is that yes that is indeed you know when they get to that point they are kind of moving back and forth from life to spirit life to spirit life to spirit it's like the tr- tunneling through they're traveling through the tunnel well, is what i yeah, kind of think it is yeah and um and she said that's sometimes like with my mom that last week that that's what it is is they're kind of they're they're already transitioning over and yet their their body just hasn't stopped yet. I know, I know I've read journal articles. Uh, I mean, I can't think of the journal names. But about how people are, when they start to die, that they have to, they go through a period where they have to start resolving anything in their life uh, with people. And this would be people that's either already gone, not there, and they'll start seeing things, they'll start talking you know, and that that's been recorded a lot when people are dying. Wow. You know that they'll see, you know, uh, brothers, sisters that are already passed, but maybe there's something not resolved there. Uh, they have to say their goodbyes at the very least. See, and to, to and like we were they, with Poppy, people it almost looked like he was wa- waited until uh, mom got down there because she was coming from here, and once everybody was in the room, that was you know the it mattered to him. That's when he finally. Let yeah. go. He, Let wait, go. he waited until the very it's, minute that she got there. And, it, yeah, she had just got into the house and got up and next to him and it's saying, you know, crying and daddy, you know, whatever. And it, there you go. I think that, that's some, one of those things that kind of gets you to the, to the point of knowing that there's something else, that there's more than just you die. Well, when you see something that, like that and you actually experience it, it makes it not it, you, you can be really less afraid of anything. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, when you see something like that, you know, as soon as I saw that, I, I instantly lost my fear of, being, of dying. Because I saw, I said, well, you know, she's not afraid. Yeah, yeah. You know, and she's going, and, you know, 
So who knows? I mean, I, I I'm not a deep thinker, but I you see something <laughs> like that, and it makes you well, it, it makes it a lot easier to understand. It's not that big a deal. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, well, there's two things. It's either something better, or we won't know it anyhow. Yeah, yeah. It's either turn out the lights, nothing, or something better. Yep. I believe in yep. something better. I do too. Hey, Don, <laughs> thanks for your call, man. Can't get worse, guys. Yeah. We'll see you later. See ya. Thanks. All right, we We're got another one. Carmen this is, is Paula. There. Hi, Paula. Hey, guys. I'm calling Paula. back. I hope I don't start coughing. Oh, uh, <laughs> hey, um, two things. I think this, this worm for the computer is is being spread by the newspaper, so that way they don't go all of business. <laughs> if, they, <laughs> if, they don't, if they kill all the computers, then we need the newspaper again. Well, you know um, what it is? It's the April Fool's joke on that little <laughs> Russian gang that started this whole thing in the first place. Everybody's gearing up for it. Tomorrow is going to come and go, and they're going to sit back and laugh and say, "See y'all, you idiots! You just spent <laughs> even more money on virus protection." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. They probably have stock bought and it's and Microsoft. All that <laughs> <laughs> it's always, you did it. It's always Bill Gates. <laughs> Bill Gates needs more money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, um, have you ever heard of um, any UFO sightings like very close to the ground in Shady Side, Ohio? Probably thirty-five years ago or so. Uh, Didn't you bring that up before? I was gonna say, I or somebody. I I've heard of that. Know. How long ago is 35 years? What year would that be? I'm bad at math. I'm sorry. Oh, make me 70s. Do that. It'd be the, the 70s. 70s. I, I haven't heard anything. I was no, gonna... Now, I know, like, throughout the 50s, 60s, and 70s, the Ohio <laughs> River has been, like, a hot spot. And, and that's just been, you know, that's documented in a lot of different places. That, you know, throughout the river, you know, all the way down and all the way up, you know, even in, you know, we've said Mothman a hundred times. That's like my favorite right. cryptid. I'm sorry. But uh, <laughs> in that book, you know, Mothman Prophecies, it, it accounts or it documents different cases, you know, all the way down from Point Pleasant, all the way up to Weirton, mm -hmm. you know, of just lights dancing through the sky, coming around. And uh, we had uh, Frank Fischino on. Frank Fischino. He, well, he talked about the one over... And supposedly in as uh, close as Park. Ogilvy. But now that was 1952. I was wondering if it was kind of the same that year. That was a... just, no, that was me coming down. <laughs> Lolo Land. land. As ascending from heaven. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We weren't going to go there with it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but the, I had worked with a fellow, and he, he, I never knew anything about it, but somebody else mentioned about his experience. And I asked him about it. He was a very quiet, mild-mannered guy, you, would, you know, like a computer geek guy. Nick. And um, and he, he was very, very open about telling the story. And he and his mom got in a car and went and, like, followed it for a while. It was very close to the ground. He, he said, you know, you could definitely tell it was a saucer. Wow. And lights. And, and, I mean, it's been so long ago since I've talked to him. But it was, like, on the south end of Shadyside. And it just, like, hovered over the city. Well, if wow. anybody out there knows him or if he's listening, we'd love to hear his story. Well, or that's, who else has seen it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that yeah. that would be interesting. I, I've i never, I honestly have never heard of anything happening in Shadyside. Well, I could give off air, I, I, can, I can give you some info, but I don't want to okay. out him. Okay. No, yeah. no, we don't want to out. <laughs> it's you, Mr. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. So-and-so. Yeah, so yeah, if any, anybody's got any info on that, you know, share it. And if you don't want to share it on the air, email us, whispers1600 at gmail.com, or find our website, and you can... Or give us a ringy know. ring. Yeah, we've got our phone number on there and stuff for, what, messages and so forth. So, yeah, that I, I would love... I mean, because I know there's been some incidents in this area. I know, actually, not too long ago, we were talking about one up closer to Steubenville uh, that someone saw... It was like a big ship, and then there was some kind of crystalline... Uh, ship or is that something. is that the one that was supposedly it like was as the, big as a mall parking lot or that, something, like that? something like that and it was rising up towards the center and that was uh it was on earth files uh linda moulton house uh linda Mo moulton house website um I, we actually had pictures and everything he took uh from his uh with his cell phone from his truck yeah. wow and, you know, i've been trying to find some more information on that but i've had been reaching rock bottom on it so it'd be interesting so uh, stuff happens around here all the time so yeah, well, like I said, it's it's been probably thirty five, forty years ago. So um, <laughs> yeah, I got interrupted. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Everybody knows now that my son has to go to the bathroom. <laughs> you need to get the boy to the. I mean, yes. He's going. He's going. Okay. Good. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, if you want, I can, I can, and he may not be receptive, but he could try contacting him. I mean, he can always just say no. Oh, of oh, course, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so, very much, Paula. Thanks. Thank All you. Right. And uh, hopefully we see you at the pen. Oh, that she already I, gone? Yeah. Gone. Well, right. you're, all, you're, you're still listening on the radio. Be at the pen. <laughs> this is Dan. Hi, Dan. Our Dan. Hey, guys. What's up? Hey, Dan. Good, Dan. Thank I'll you be- very much for filling in for me last week. Hey, no problem. I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. Well, we were actually about to talk about your picture, if you want to kind of give us the introduction to it. That's where I wanted to go. First, I wanted yeah, I figured to say you if, would. There's, if there's any casting agents <laughs> in the Valley listening, there'd be <laughs> nobody better to fill in the PC Mac commercials than Jordan and Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I would win because I'd use a chair. I could so see it right now. Uh, yeah. And this whole worm thing is caused by Nick and his bitter bitterness, you know. <laughs> yeah. Against my new computer that hasn't broken. Yeah. Him and his, of him course, I'm taking out all the PCs because the Or pitiful been, PC. Yeah. Taking yeah. everybody down with him. Yeah. Any Bloody Marys lately, Lola? No. Oh, you missed no. that. We had Lola go into the bathroom, turn off the lights, and say Bloody Mary five times. Oh, yes, she I, did it. I. She did it in her head. We'll see if you. If no, you, I actually said it out loud, Dan. If, <laughs> because if, I was going to tempt fate. If you guys were knowledgeable on your, uh, I guess, fairy tales, Candyman is five times. Is it? Well, oh, no, Nick I was, said there's, three. I'm Nick looking, said three. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so are you saying that Lola did it wrong? And yeah, well, well that's well, why she did, wasn't killed horrifically. <laughs> I mean, what, no. what are you right. trying to say? All what? right, Dan, tell us about your picture. Yeah. Anyway, uh, well, not not so much the picture. Um, I was I was going to ask you if you got check chance the check to wow. Yeah. That's why I'm not there this week. <laughs> A chance to check the video of the UFO. Oh, the O'Hare one. I, the I, O'Hare had, one. I had a chance to check that one out, Jordan. Yes, I did, but oh, good. I, I don't okay. have an opinion on it. You don't have an opinion. Okay. Of course, you wouldn't have an opinion. Well, then I'll say this. For everybody listening, go go check out Whispers Forum. There's plenty of discussion to be opened up there. I posted the video link for uh, that UFO and the picture for the so-called elderly ghost at the castle. Um, go check it out. Leave your opinions. I, To me, of course, the UFO thing is a whole big hoax that uh, the guy, I believe, says he took it from a cell phone from the ground. Now, now, Dan last week wanted to come out and start bashing right at the beginning, being the skeptic. And, of course, the guy comes online, uh, L.A. Mar- Marzulli, and he if he's listening, he'll probably, have a, mouth. Yeah, he, he'll probably have a, a laugh at this. He comes out and says, well, the last time I was on the air, on the radio, uh, the guy said he didn't believe anything I said, and, and I was really mad at him, and Dan's sitting there, and he just throws his papers in the air. <laughs> Well, there goes me. I was like, all this time I spent, and I'm done. Dan, <laughs> Dan's our friendly yet. neighborhood s- skeptic. <laughs> but, uh, no, there's plenty. We had plenty of good topics going on that forum, but uh, check it out. I, I, I think that I typed in there. I won't go into it now, but I typed in what I think the whole video is and how it was fixed and doctored and faked and and all that. But uh, Now, this is the uh, UFO one of uh, the O'Hare. The UFO video. Yeah. Yeah. How, now, how do I there? get to our we- the website? Whispersradio.com. Oh, that's it. What's this Twitter? Are we on Twitter, too? We are, actually. But, and do uh, people that tweet on Twitter, are they twits? Nick is a twit. <laughs> but I might what start tweeting, I, too, on Twitter. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting him started so we can... Now, how do you, how do you get the to following. the forum? How do you get to the forum? I think it's whispersradio.com slash forum. Can you try that, Jordan? Um... I've got Black Vault Radio. Yeah, we're on Black Vault Radio, Black too. Vault, right, that's but it's whispersradio.com slash forum, and it'll okay. take you to our forum. That's yeah, that's uh, but we're syndicated online on Black Vault Radio. Oh, are we making money? No. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Yeah, see the card. <laughs> I wish. I, uh, now, this other uh, picture, and you, you actually sent me the, the, this, this weekend. It's yep. uh, Ghost Photo Baffles Experts. Uh, an eerie image of a figure at a Scottish castle has got ghost experts spooked. Ooh. Ooh, uh, the scary, uh, yeah. The scary shot was unearthed during the biggest ever investigation in the photographic evidence of ghosts. The picture taken in May last year shows a spectral figure in 15th century dress peering out of a barred window at Tin, Tintalan. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Castle in Fife. Uh, no mannequins or costume guides are used at the castle, and photo experts have confirmed that no digital trickery was used. Even ghost skeptic Professor Richard Wiseman admitted to being puzzled. It is certainly very curious. I wish I could do a Scottish accent. <laughs> Here comes my skeptics. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, now, I'm looking at the photo, and I've got the black and white one. Uh, Jordan, you've seen it. 
Lola, you probably have it up over there on your screen in full color. Yeah, I do. It, That's what it looks very clear to me. I mean, and, but then why shouldn't it be clear? I mean, you know, it's it's too clear. It, it's it's. What I is think that it's clearly, thing underneath? It's she's like a got zoom some kind of a. Are you talking about like her on her che- uh, throat? No, I'm looking at the. What are you talking about? Which? I'm looking at the O'Hara video. Oh, the no, O'Hara no, no. Video. <laughs> we're talking what about you a looking? ghost. Oh, He's talking about a ghost. picture on sun. Uh, the okay, sun. wait a minute. Let me get back the to picture, that. in my thought, like here is my belief. We have been skeptic to so many things. No offense, Dan. <laughs> that even if we had blatant proof, if a ghost walked in right here, I got my picture taken with it, and he's like, hey, guys, and he came on the radio, <laughs> still nobody would believe it. Nick and I are standing right here, you know, because that's nothing's not going to be woman. credible. The ghost? Well, back no, in the day, women were old, old and ugly. That's well, a see, man. It's, it's, <laughs> with a bonnet? I was going to try to do the Austin Powers. That's a man, man. It's a man, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's... It, it says a woman on here. It she's, looks like it has a bonnet on. Well, she's got yeah. look like one of those ruffled things that they used to wear back well, in the day. Well, but they did. Men wore those high ruffled collars, men and wore, they like, also skirts and stuff too. It's but <laughs> that's not. Jordan, you, you're an expert. He's walked over. He's an expert on whether it's a man or a woman. I think it was an overlooked guide of the castle. And, and they're saying they don't use costumed guides, but you know there are people that wear. You they, know, well, see that's the, and that's what that's where my that's where my problem comes in. I don't go on hearsay, sure, and I'm sure. more about um, I got to see things for myself. And uh, so for them to just say, it's "Oh yeah, yeah, they weren't there," and this and that, how do we know? Yeah, there, well, that I mean, stuff it, it's on our forum. Everybody, uh, go out there, look at it, see what you think, see yeah, if you're on please. Dan's side of the team there with. Well, Dan's going to be a skeptic about everything. It, it's, a ghost will walk up to him and talk to him at the prison, and he'll be like, I was a, ga- a guide. I you probably know, would. Yeah. <laughs> I passed my hand right through him, but, you know, it was a guide. He was kind of fuzzy. He was know. thin. Yeah. I think it was David Copperfield or something. Yeah. So it's, yeah. So, All right, know, guys. You are going to the prison with us. Are, are you still pretty sure you're going? I'm pretty positive I'm still going. Okay. Well, well I hope so. You can go That's meet nice. Dan at the prison. Uh, now, I do have to ask you, Jordan, how are we doing on the ticket? So I know we're at this point, we're going to have to start cutting some people off because they haven't paid. Uh, I'm going to have to look, uh, go in probably tonight and Do you want to hear through. this business, Dan? I'm sorry? Do you want to hear this business, Dan? Or do well, you I, I just we're wanted, to ask, Nick, later I just wanted to ask Nick real quick um, sure. how the pool's going on. I don't want to, okay, just cut him off. <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> I, I have no, lo- not that pool. Oh, which pool are we talking about? about oh, who's going to run? The prison. Oh, uh, yeah. She was putting it on me, but we kind of reversed it on her. We, we've got a pool going on. How quickly Lola's going to? You all think this, and I've got <laughs> news for you. Y'all are going to be really disappointed. What did, I don't know. What did Sammy put the money on? He did he put it on that she won't even show up? No, <laughs> Sammy knows I'll be. Sammy is going to be by my side the no, entire Sammy night. Sammy pulled us aside. <laughs> I think Sammy was, no. Sammy was the smart one. I don't yeah. think he put anything down. Now here's here's my my take Sammy on it. Sammy knows better. It, we're going into a situation where I really don't want any goofing around. But I'm, oh, no, I'm, I'm kind of making I'm kind of making it a, a personal goal to do what to, to make Lola, Nick squeal like a little Lola girl to get Lola and Sammy. Like I I I, I want to set oh, something up me, just I to get the two of now. See, and that'll ruin the integrity of the whole yeah. thing if you guys start screwing around I and make a joke out of this, right. Dan. Then you know I like how she said just Dan. Was, Dan, well, cut that out because that's not what we stand for. <laughs> She's Dan. Grow hey, up. See, I can punish these two anytime I want. Hey Dan, uh, thanks, you just hey, watch. Dan. Thanks for calling in, Dan. There's no goofing for me. I'm just going. I'm going to check it out. Like I said last week, when I, I may, when I see it, I'll believe it, guy. Yeah. Well, hopefully yeah. you'll see something. I hope. So, I hope everybody gets to experience something. Yeah, me too. Yeah, All I right. Too. So. Hey, All see right. you, Dan. Great Dan. job, guys. Take care. Thanks. You too. We have a caller. No. No, no I, I'm Why? sorry. Jeez, Nick. Jeez. Okay. It was just preemptive. I saw your hand moving. I. All right. Okay. Well, let's move to the other story then. <laughs> this this is actually this is. You ought to. Cl- do you have the website pulled up, or I, you just you know, printed the story? I printed the because story because this click here for slideshow. Slideshow. Yeah, I'm going to walk. Is over. rather interesting. Jordan, I'm going to walk this over to you. The uh, now this is uh, this story is from uh, Google Street View. 
uh, a picture taken on Google Street View. I'm going to take okay, it over to you. Know you. How, you know how Google, uh, if you go into like Google Maps and stuff like that, you can uh, you know, keep zooming in and zooming in and zooming in and zooming in. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it'll get you where they have those cars with the cameras going around in it. Well, uh, there was a picture taken from one of those cars uh, that's got like a little... It's hard to see it in black and white. Nikki printed it out. Uh, what's the website on this, Nick? Uh, that's uh, from the uh, UFO Examiner. UFO Examiner? Uh, on, uh, it's uh, Pittsburgh. Okay. Uh, Pittsburgh uh, newspaper. Anyway, it, it's got like a little formation in the uh, top right corner, kind of diamond-shaped with spots. Credibility-wise, I give it a negative something because Nick's a UFO guy. And I like to think maybe I am too, but he's not next to a microphone. I'm going to tell you right now, it's kind of goofy. It's probably birds. <laughs> I also want to mention. Hey. Hey, guys. Fuck. <laughs> That's what a host does. Anyway. The, the slideshow on the Sun's website is really. That's better pictures than that. Thing now, the last picture the there is a picture. Jordan, did you get to see the slideshow? No, I'll check it later. I, oh, was you, just, I was just telling everybody how I thought your thing was birds. What? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, birds. Do birds fly in a diamond pattern? Well, I don't know. Did you see? The, you, do you still have the uh, the Google thing up that I pulled up All for right, you? Do we got a phone call? Yes, it's let's go Andy. to the phone call. <laughs> there. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Hi Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Hi, everybody. It's me again with a question. Can you sure. just do something for me, real quick? Sure. Can you just say, Nick, that's birds, and then go on with your story? <laughs> Nick, that's birds. Oh, you too. See, Sandy's on my side. <laughs> what Google thing? And, and sometimes birds do fly in what looks like, a, you know, if they're in a real close formation. A diamond. It, yeah. it does look like a diamond. Oh, sometimes. man, thank you very much. <laughs> well, I've, I've seen it. Uh, so so what's, your, uh, what's your story? <laughs> well, I wanted to know, without the frog in my throat, <laughs> Pardon me. Um, the, uh, what you guys, what, what you folks, all of you going in to the pen uh -huh. are going to do to protect yourself from, when I told my sister you're going to do it, I thought she might come and, you know, want to do it with me and we could do it together. And she said, oh, I wouldn't want to go in where all those angry souls had been and, and all that evil had been, you know. So what are you going to do to protect yourself from, Say an evil spirit, um, Sammy. <laughs> you're taking Sammy. Yeah. And they're going to inhabit Sammy. <laughs> oh, would well, that be wicked? If anybody can take it, Sammy can take it. I'll tell you what we do, and it's a it's a practice for our group, which is uh, we pray Pro first. Or we we pray for protection okay. and uh, for God to keep His hand on us before we go into any situation. And, and surround yourselves with the white light. And we sure do, and it hasn't hindered us. Uh, okay. Thus far, on not finding any, like, it's not like we're praying and then everything scatters. Uh, we've still found evidence. We've still got voices. Yeah. But nothing has uh, followed no, us. Nothing has. Nothing hurt you or, no. or you've had any repercussions after you leave? No. Okay. We, well, no. But prayer is, a, prayer is a practice that we as a group uh, take. Other groups uh, don't do that. Other groups have their different beliefs and what everything is. So what follows around with our beliefs uh, prayer is what's been helping us, and it's not wow. something that's ever taken away us actually experiencing things. When we, you know, we prayed, we prayed quite a bit at the one place that we kept hearing things, and it was still there, but it never bothered us. So, uh, as as you heard things, you kept praying uh, throughout the thing. You mean? Well, we 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 went upstairs, or Jordan went upstairs with someone. They actually heard like a little girl so singing then we came, loud. Came back and it's, downstairs. It was an abandoned house. So. Yeah. So, and it was uh, then you know we kind of. Prayed for protection. Go back into the house, and we heard people you know, like stuff talking back and forth the rest of the night. It was, uh, but it, was it took the intense. fear of something attaching itself because spirits will. And uh, I know we've we've talked about it before on the show. Uh, uh -huh. Lola's talked about it with uh, uh, Amanda Deshong on her show. Mm -hmm. uh, spirits will attach themselves to things. Yeah, uh, and that's yeah. that's why I quit kind of buying furniture from a thrift store. You know, you never know what's cut where it's coming from, what's attached to that object. You know, it, yeah. Now I know uh, Sherry had talked about it one time that she had uh, uh, with Sherry Break Rico uh, had talked about uh, during one of our classes. She you know went and investigated this house, and on her way home, you know she felt the presence of something with her, and uh, didn't she even say she saw something in like in the back seat or something? And you know she immediately, 
you know, you can't come with me. He prayed and, you know, asked, you know, asked it to leave so it wouldn't come home the rest of the way with her. Yeah. With her. And, oh. yeah, and, it's, and so, I mean, it's... Well, it's, uh, uh, Lorraine Warren, we had Lorraine Warren on just a few weeks ago. Uh, she was a demonologist. I don't know if you caught that show. No, but, I didn't. Well, she, uh, she did, like, the Amityville Horror House. Uh, she was the main investigator. And uh, that movie that's out now, The Haunting in Connecticut, the, oh. that was, those were her cases. And uh, she was saying that, you know, things have followed her home and her and her husband have this, like, they call it an occult museum of all these, like, haunted objects that they keep, you know, in a room in their house. And, Dude. I mean, they don't even let people in that room at nighttime, you know, because oh. the things in the room, they say, can kill you. But they have it. They have, like, people going in and praying, you know, security through it all, like, twice or three times a week. Uh, and things and like they that. Had, they had something actually come home with them from the Amityville house yeah. that uh, she saw, and it was at, it was in the room with her at the same time it was in the room with her husband on two separate parts of their house, and they you know prayed in the name of Jesus Christ, you know, because it was a demon. I mean, she said uh-huh. she really felt it was a demon. And uh, you can listen to this show if you want to listen to it. You know, we record every show. It's on whispersradio.com. It was oh, okay. actually a really interesting story that she, you know, it, she felt, I mean, you know, evil, you know, it's, and, you know, it went immediately away. And her husband's like, well, yeah, I was in where I was at, too, you know, and it was. I'll be darned. So, yeah, it's, uh, things it's a very can real happen. thing. It's not like a fun, hey, let's go out and try something. There's definitely a real danger. There's something really there that attaches the spirit no. world is a real world, whether it be uh, well, angelic, yeah. demonic. There's stuff oh, it's there. just a, it's just a, I, I, my, my personal feeling, and I'm not pushing this on anyone, but my personal feeling is that it's just another vibration, mm-hmm. and it's and it's only a vibration away from our physicality, which is why I've always felt that the spirit world isn't off in some ethereal place. It's right here beside me. Yeah. Okay. And there's it's a lot just, of people with that belief. Yeah. It's just it's just it's parallel to it's parallel to me now. I just can't see it. And, yeah. and there's things, I mean, even what do they say, like cats, animals, mm-hmm. uh, certain cameras. I mean, there's certain situations that people can get in where they can see different fields. And I believe I I heard uh, on Lola's show one day they were talking about different fields that people can see, like aura. You know, there's people yeah. that can oh, see an aura. Oh, I've seen people's aura. I've I have seen people's aura. Yeah. Uh, I saw Amanda Deshaun's when she was giving she was well she was actually giving a reading and. <clears throat> And I saw hers, and it was crystal clear, uh, almost like when you're driving down the road, and uh, it's a hot day, and there's steam on the road, and, or there's water on the road, but you don't see the water. You see the you just see steam. the waves, yeah, yeah coming off. And that's what I saw, crystal clear, and I saw those waves coming off of her body like that. And she that's was giving me a reading, and I I told her after the reading was over, I said, I hope it's a good thing because that's what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, there's stuff out there, you know, there, there's so many planes of existence. And I mean, throughout the Bible, you know, you read that there's uh, battles going on around you, you know, the battles of good and evil, the battle, mm-hmm. battles of angels and spirits, the, you, mm-hmm. you know, it's all going on around us. There's such a, there's a, a realm that's surrounding us and whatever faith you are, you know, there's some belief that there's, there's things around us at all times that we just can't see and right when things like uh was it don that called in just a little bit ago mm-hmm. saying that you know they, that the person was talking to somebody who wasn't there you know yeah. because their their mind is get, being opened you know they're seeing uh, this other realm the the spirit world they're starting to open their eyes to it and uh, like lola said they're starting to make that transformation well when he called in i uh, i was reminded of my mother uh of course i told you she died in that <laughs> sense of the picture so yeah. um uh, and before she died, she was telling us that she kept seeing a she kept seeing a white light, and the nurse that was with us kept telling her to go. She said, "Well, Lillian, it's okay. You can go ahead and go to that white light." Oh wow! You know, but she she was seeing it. She saw it. Wow. Uh, and wow. I've always wondered if it was really a white light. That's what she saw, wow. and that's what she said. Well, you know, um, there's a belief that perhaps schizophrenics are not really; they are not mentally ill. But they're seeing two different, they're, they're two living different on two different planes, yeah, exactly. or dimensions. And, and yeah. that's why they hear voices. No, I, wor- I worked with one schizophrenic who I truly believed, you know, was seeing spirits and was, 
You know, I, I believe she was possessed. That was mine. I mean, if you she think, scared me. Yeah, if you think about it, I mean, you some people can hear different frequencies. Uh, we there, I was uh, watching a news article or news program about people installing those alarms that only teenagers can hear, and it's at a different frequency because their ears are developed in a certain way. You know, well, they they're not lost, damaged yet. They're not damaged yet. But what if you know somebody can? Are, are they're born with ears that are more sensitive to where they can actually hear things at a higher frequency that are, you know, does that make sense yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, and they're born with that gift. It's kind of a mutation or deformity or whatever, and they're actually hearing it, and we just think they're losing their mind. Like uh, recorders, you know, yeah, like when we do our EVP work. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing there. We push record, uh, we push play, and voila. You know, same thing with, you know, people that see things. It could be, you know, something we just don't know. No, Sandy, thank you very much for your call. Thank you very another, much. Have another mm-hmm. call. We got one more. Who's this? Yep. This is, um, I think, Ed. Ed, is it, you're, is that it? Ed? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's time to go home. Hey, so Ed, give up? us your story. Okay. I want to tell you an ESP story about my mother. All right. This happened years ago. I had an older brother and his wife and his children moved to California. He got a good uh, job out there, and they lived out there about two years. Mm-hmm. And one morning... Here, right here in the valley. My mother got up. My brother loved homemade spaghetti. Mom loved spaghetti and her homemade bread. She got up one morning, and she started mixing up homemade bread, mm-hmm. and she started making this gigantic, gigantic batch of spaghetti. It was way more than we needed for what we lived in our house. I love spaghetti. And my stepdad and me and my brother, we said, Mom, what are you doing? And she said, Bill and Pat and the kids are coming here today. And we said, Mom, you completely lost your mind. <laughs> and she says, I rode in the car with them all night. They're coming here today. Really? And we all thought Mom was completely out of her mind. That afternoon, about 5 o'clock, my brother and his wife and them kids pulled up to our house. They said they didn't call her until they were coming because they didn't want her to worry. Wow. Uh, that's crazy. And she said she rode with them all night? She said, I rode with them and them kids in that car all night. They're coming here today. And she made the spaghetti and homemade bread. And they came just in time for dinner. Wow. And I'm telling you, that's a fact. That's crazy. Oh, I, wow. I believe it. Only huh? one time have I been so tuned into somebody. And um, it was a long story, and I'm not going into it. But every single night, we both, we were in separate places. We would both wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Without any, you know, it wasn't like we had planned it or anything. And I could actually really just kind of wish or think, you know, call. I need you to call. I need you to call now. And within minutes, the phone would ring. But only one time, you know, with one specific person. Now it's like, go away. Go away. (laughs) And they still call me again. That's my favorite story. That is absolute fact. We all thought of was completely out of her mind and it turned out she knew something now and i'll never just say she's gone but i'll never know how she did that wow that's great well, thanks she was, at, <laughs> okay, that, that, she was that psychically attuned to your brother that's moms that's have superpowers she, she literally said my step, we all said oh you're crazy she said i rode in the car with them all day. they're coming here this afternoon wow See? and they did that's crazy yeah, that's awesome. it's, it's great <laughs> hey it's thanks great. Okay, thanks thank a you. lot Bye. All right, everybody, we're about uh, finished. Uh, we have next week, uh, we're, you know, well, we're going to have our two-hour format from, you know, now until, I guess, basketball season starts again. So, uh, uh, yeah, football's football. a Friday night game, so. Yeah, okay, Friday night lights. Football, then. But, uh, you know, so this second hour, that's all you guys, so well, we want your week calls. Next week we'll have second hours to the other guests, uh, So our first hour is going to yeah, be calls? Because, yeah, because we uh, – we're going to be trying to switch that around, uh, you know, just because I like the way we're doing it. We did it tonight. Uh-huh. But we have some guests that I uh, just couldn't get for the hour. Get for that first hour. Right. Uh, next week's guest is uh, Jim Butcher, New York Times bestselling author of The Dresden Files. Uh, you ever heard of The Dresden? You've, you've actually watched some of the episodes at my house, haven't you? Yeah. There's, uh, he used to, the books were moved over or taken as a uh, TV series on Sci Fi Channel. Uh, to be honest with you, the books are a hundred million times better. Great, you know, great book series. He'll be with us uh, next week from uh, seven uh, seven to eight, and 
six to uh, seven is your phone calls, stories, whatever. All right, everybody. That's all we got for this week. Until next time, don't be afraid, only believe.